Good evening and welcome to the rest of the news. Our special guest today is Ed Holloway, who is a former state representative for how many years? Oh, 17 years. You have some really important things to say. Well, we've reached a critical stage in, in, in our life as Americans. Yes. And there's a mu multiple forces in, 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 at work that are actually out to destroy what we have traditionally felt is the great American dream. Right. And uh, it, it's reached a stage now that, it, particularly with this election, as to what the future is going to be for America. And, um, and as Ronald Reagan once said, that this is the only place left. If, if, if America falls, there's no place left to go. So we've got more than just that, and it's a combination of things. And the hard part of it is, I'm old enough now that I can go back into the things in the 60s and the 70s and watching this thing evolve and coming forward. And at the same time, the media and others have ignored the, the real problems and the underlying threats to America. Right, right. And as Ben Franklin said when he walked out of the and Constitution Hall and they asked him what kind of a government have you given, and he said, we've given you a, a republic if you can keep it. And that was replying that it's up to the individual as a citizen of Kentucky, take the responsibility uh, to maintain the quality of America that was founded on and, and made it the number one country in the world. Now, I got this newsletter today that kind of ties in with what you were saying, and it's from uh, David Horowitz. And he said the Democrat Party today is nothing at all like the Democrat Party of. Uh, you know, 50 right. years ago yeah. or 30 years ago. Right. Exactly what happened was that uh, the students for a democratic society, the ones in the 60s that were the radicals that were going around and and uh, having all the protests and sit-ins and all of those things that were going on, found out it wasn't working. When yeah. they went to the democratic convention in Chicago, uh, they were forced out. And the Democrats at that point, and then they had a meeting and brought in their leaders from all of the university campus, campuses around the country and decided that we're going to have to work from the inside. Our approach of sit-ins and radical protests and all that's not working. So what they did was decide that they had to change their academic credentials and go into journalism, into television, into politics, into local government, and all of those areas in order to effectively change and there be their degree of what they called a utopian society right, was right. one that you had to completely destroy America as it existed and then rebuild it from the ashes. Now these are the radical left wingers. There's the that... radical left wingers and in the same process they were the ones that volunteered to, to work with all of the democratic organizations and eventually take them over. So that when you talk about the Democratic Party 25, 30, 40 years ago, that is not anything even remotely like what it is today. Right. It seems to me that there uh, are two parties in America, two primary parties. Exactly. And one is pro-America and the other is anti America. Exactly. And that is what was boiling down to and the party labels that that were traditional are things that, that no longer on the, and you go into the depth of them, it's almost like a front organization. You get into the nitty gritty of both of them, uh, and, and you find that it's not anything like what it was traditionally. Uh, some of the things that people have been supporting a given party for, for generations, uh, it, it's no longer the same thing. It's not true. So it's, um, it's amazing all of the things that are happening now, and the thing with voter fraud. Yeah, uh, we've got this. You know, they're saying, "Well, Obama says there's no voter fraud and all that." Well, of course, he it's says that. Like, if, if it would be, it would be as rare as being hit with lightning. And if you look at it now, the radicals are coming forward and bragging about what they've been able to do in this particular campaign. All of the upheaval and and this violence that were taking place at some of the Trump rallies was highly organized. They were paid agitators that went in and created the problems, and on and on and on. And it's been all the way across the board. 
So this is what they're doing. And in voter fraud, the guy that's been organizing this for years, and if you remember several years ago, they were taking busloads of people from one state to another to vote. And they said no, and then they got exposed on that particular point. They said, no, we don't do that anymore. We use rental cars. So all of these people that, that have been, they think they've won this election. They think they've got Hillary in there, and they, they're going to use that. And in that process, they're now bragging about it openly and, and in public. And then there's a... These are the left-wingers. Exactly. And they're, they're more left-wingers. They make, uh, uh, like, communism and other things. Uh, they want to improve on those concepts. Right. And this thing that worries me more than anything else is that uh, surveys taken of the millennials. Uh, the, the one thing that was surprising more than any of the others was that they believed that more people were killed by George Bush than by Stalin in Russia. The and millennials said the that? Millennials but those are college that, students? College students. That, 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 and this is where you can see what's happened to the history that was being taught in the American school system all the way through. So that you brought these people that now in their 20s and 30s have no concept of what really went on in the world. And in one case in the Ukraine, Stalin starved to death five million people. Right, right. And nobody wants to talk about that kind of thing. So all of these things are going on and have been going on. And while the average American has been taking care of his family, raising his children, doing his job, paying his taxes, and all that, these radicals have been working in the background and have taken over not only the political party, but other things that they are. And I've just, a new book that was just uh, uh, released called Guilty as Sin. It talks about the, the things that go on with the Clintons and all of the things that have happened in their case. And that's all. Uh, and that's all. And it's very much like hidden. You know, uh, hidden. And they've been covering it up for. Oh, all the way back to where he was governor and some of the things. One cl one condition that just came out was the fact that when she was with the Rose Law Firm and um, there was a court case with all these documents were supposed to have been submitted to the courts and they disappeared. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And they didn't find them, but years later, they were found on a library table in the White House when put Clinton was a part president of the United States. And we we can go on and on and on with time after time and some of the things that Hillary has done in yeah, terms yeah. of all of those things. And uh, but she has lied about so many things in her life, and they're all coming out to the you know, by people that have known her forever or that are talking about it and explaining what has been going on. Uh, classic example of some of the things she did when she was at Wesley. Her roommate was the granddaughter of. Of Dean Atchison, and Atchison was a, a lesbian, and they were roommates for that, and they became friends. And when Bill was elected president, she got her appointed to the Justice Department and was in charge of, of screening judicial candidates and having approve only liberals. And in that process, she had one appointed. Uh, to a, a federal judgeship on the codes of America, and later she married this federal judge, the Atchison girl. So all of those things that, that have been going on have been multiple, and her closest associate, uh, Uma, yeah, is uh, her closest friend for twenty years, and they uh, and her parents were radicals and part of the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. Her father, her mother leads a, a, a radical Muslim paper uh, that's printed, and she had worked for that printed thing for 13 years before she got involved with Hillary. So on and on and on, we look at the Muslims, and we look at what's been going on with Obama for the last eight years, and all of the statistics that are thrown out by the government showing how wonderful everything is. And at the same time, if you look under the surface, the life, the life of an average American is far less than it was 10 years ago. Right. 
their income has dropped, cost of living has increased substantially, and with just like Social Security, there's going to be very practically no increase in that for the people that are depending on it. So we can go on and on and on, but it all goes back to a guy named Saul Alinsky. And Saul wrote a book uh, that was published, which says it all, it's Rules for Radicals. And he was a Chicago and grew up in Chicago on the, and lived on the streets and all that, but eventually got into the universities, got a degree in criminology, and he worked with the uh, Capone gang as part of his final thesis to study Al Capone and his gangs and how they worked. And from the way the mafia and the Capone organization worked and how they were able to do so much during Prohibition became the, the basis for his thing of rap, rules for radicals and becoming a community organizer. And he has, and it's going in operation today, a training session for community organizer. And that, and Hillary became a, a, a follower of Alinsky, and her thesis that she wrote when she was leaving Wesley, her senior Wellesley. year at Wesley University, she yeah. was uh, wrote this thesis on Saul Alinsky, and it was kept hidden for thirty-five years. Really, and all of those things. But this is also where she became a follower of his. She was in Chicago, so was Obama. And they woke the plug, and, and he constantly referred to Alinsky as being a, like a mentor. And that was one of the things that he found that, that Alinsky said, you need to get into the churches in the areas where there are poor people, the blacks and minorities. And that was how he ended up in that church in Chicago was yeah. a, as a community leader. Uh, organizer, and that was, you know, it goes on and on. There's so many things we could talk forever about. Well, the thing about Rules for Radicals that impressed me the most was that it was dedicated to Satan exactly. or Lucifer. Yeah. But one of the things, and of course, that's been part of this thing I've said, that we got to get rid of religion. Yeah, it's get a, rid of it's God. A, it's, yeah. a, it's an obstacle, and, and we have to do that and, and multiple things. And if Hillary is elected, for example, she wants to get rid of the free free speech, the First Amendment, get rid of the Second Amendment, the right to own a weapon, and on and on and on. And the key thing was the support for changing the Supreme Court to make it more right, radical. Right. Now, and it seems like to, George Soros is one of the big funders, right? And, uh, not only of what you're talking about, but also rule of uh, the. Uh, Black Lives Black Matter. Matters and, and several other ra radical organizations. So he just paid people to go over there and yeah. start a riot and build, burn buildings and things like that. And if you go into the background of some of these people, I do take Saul Alinsky and, and, uh, and George Soros. George Soros' family uh, were, were Jewish, and they had changed their name to Soros uh, when Hitler was coming into power and all that and threatening Jews. So that's how the name Soros evolved. I don't know what the original Jewish name was, but when they invaded, the Germans came into Hungary, and George Soros volunteered to help the Gestapo find Jewish families. He pointed them out, and they were all loaded up and sipped off to one of the death camps. George Soros. That was George Soros's background. Right. Right. As a as a main aid of the Nazi party in Hungary. Unbelievable. So we could go on and on and on and, and background of all of these people and some of the things, and it's evolved over a long period of time. There's another thing that's come out, and this is Hail Hillary. And Hail Hitler, Hillary is a list of about 20 individuals in prominent positions, even including former FBI and others that have seen what it was happening and what would be the ultimate outcome. Well, you know, I got this letter in the mail today, and it says that, just like what you're talking about, uh, that Obama has fired many of the senior officers in our military because they wouldn't go along with his agenda. Right. So here we have, it says 200 senior officers 
have been relieved of their duty. And uh, the idea is to make the military compliant for his social agenda. Yeah. Well, both Obama and Hillary both hate the military and everything it stands for, particularly anybody in the uniform. And it's gone on, and what is going on today, they continue to cut various organizations within the military. There are some career fields of the military that don't even exist in the regulars anymore. They're out in the reserves. If they had to pull up some, somebody, they had to get them out of a reserve. And as they've cut back, they've also cut the financing of, of component parts and others that the military oh, really? needs in right. the aviation. They're now having to pirate pieces off of existing aircraft to get enough of them in the air. But what your point was, cut back on those senior officers, it's also happening at the lower levels. As they're making each unit smaller, they're taking career officers and, and, and career uh, enlisted men, sergeants and others, and phasing them out. And it's reached a point now that young people thinking about a military career won't. You get somebody that it's 17 years of service that's cut off before he was three years away from his, his pension and his retirement in the military, and they lose 100% of all of that. So all of the things that have been going on, we now have a Navy that's smaller than it was before World War I. We have an Air Force that's in name only. We can't even get the planes in the air that we've got on the ground. And the same thing has happened to the Army and others and what we've done. And it's all based on the fact that we were a colonial power in the eyes of Obama and in the eyes of his father. And if you read his book, Dreams of My Father, it expels out exactly what he's been doing for eight years. His father was a radical Muslim. His grandfather had been a spy for the Mau Mau and was in a British officer's mess and was picking, picking up information from conversations was going on there. And he was later arrested and made, tried, to, and according to Obama, was tortured to find out who the information was going to. And uh, it shows what, again, when he's talked about these colonial powers that uh, invaded these countries in Africa and the tribes and all that. And uh, so he wants to end that kind of thing, including taking America down at the same time. So all of these things are all fitting together, and it's all making a fruition. But the average citizen who has relied on the media and others, not only the written news, uh, but the one on television, none of these things are ever discussed. Right, right. And it's reached, a, a, again, a critical point. And uh, if we're to survive, uh, we have to do, make sure that this doesn't continue. Well, now, here in this same letter from um, a colonel, he says that uh, not only are they eliminating the uh, leadership of the military so that they could have nobody in the military except people that would be uh, go along with whatever Obama wants to do. It seems like they've done that in the FBI and other exactly. uh, yeah. branches where... Uh, you know, uh, the, what is it, the attorney general? Right. That they don't want to prosecute anyone, just drop the cases like they did the uh, people that were trying to, uh, vote in, I believe it was Philadelphia, and they, uh, wouldn't let them in the building to vote. Right. And they, they dropped the whole case. Well, that was the Black Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. the previous uh, uh, attorney general. And then they won. And our current attorney general was, uh, one who was appointed to a federal judgeship uh, by Bill Clinton and Hillary, and uh, she has an obligation to that, and so she's afraid. And this is what happened to, uh, to the FBI director when he made his statements. He outlined the case against Hillary from beginning to end, and then at the last said nobody would prosecute her yeah, because yeah. he had already known what would happen ultimately. But in that, he'd have been he just, fired if he'd he would have he done did, justice. Exactly, and at the time, he's destroyed his credibility that he once had of being a, a straight shooter. And individual members of the FBI and retired FBI agents are livid. I've talked to two or three of them that have just said that they've destroyed the 
the whole process of the FBI and its impartial uh, operations. That and so they're saying that uh, one of the things that uh, Clinton, uh, Clinton, Obama is uh, demanding is that they eliminate freedom of religion in the military. They have done that. They've uh, also made the uh, Veterans Administration and prohibiting the bringing of a Bible into the VA yes. hospitals and, and the ministers and others that used to come. And at the same time, they're allowing homosexuals and others into the military. They're putting women in yeah. combat units, which destroys the internal morale and camaraderie of, of a of a military unit. All of these things have been destructive and uh, reaching a point that it's going to be hard and take a lot of effort, part of every American citizen, to turn this thing around and bring America back to its formal greatness. And, it, uh, and to just stuff. defend our country, even. Uh, right. It says, uh, there's no doubt that Obama is intent on emasculating the military and will fire anyone who disagrees with him. Right. And this, again, was the part of the movement that, uh, that Hillary has prof professed the same same type of thing. And, again, like I said, she hates uh, anything in a uniform. Uh, the books that have been written by former Secret Service agents about what they've gone through and being appointed to be the on, the, on the, taking care of Hillary and being yes. part of her thing. Uh, they feel that's now a, an assignment as a punishment uh, the existing members of the Secret Because Service. she curses them and things oh, like that. Oh, yes, and she hates every one of them, uh, but they're, they're like a necessary evil that she tolerates. Well, let me just uh, go here just a minute and talk about this is the Kentucky Doctors for Life, and the speaker is Pastor Cecil Bly, and it's going to be... Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. There'll be a free dinner, and it's going to be held at the St. Matthew's Community Center, which is directly across uh, the street from the uh, Mall of St. Matthew's. Right. Okay, it's on 10 Pin Lane, and uh, it's $25 per person. They're going to have prime rib for dinner. So. That is something. Now, uh, if you want to go to this, you call 893-2444, and we'll uh, get this out to you. Uh, you know, get your name as somebody that's coming, so we'll have plenty of food for everybody. And the other thing is, this is a free DVD. It's seven minutes long. And it's about pastor, the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas. His name is Robert Jeffress, J-E-F-F-R-E-S-S. -S -S. Like I say, it's only seven minutes long, and it says why churches should be involved in the moral issues of the day, basically, and things like that. And again, that was another area that, that they've been intimidated and threatened with oh, the yes. loss of tactics and status and everything else. And it, it, it's been another problem. You know, trying to cover all of these things and the fact that abortion is increasing, they want to expand the Planned Parenthood, on and on and on. Every category you normally think of as a Christian and others that have been traditional are all out the window. And they're going to increase that and finance it and making it, again, with the re removal under the First Amendment, the Constitution, the, the freedom of speech, and by political correctness and, and by other laws that would change that to where everybody's going to be forced to keep their mouth shut. You can't talk about it. You can't Amazing. complain about it. And, then, and disarm America the same way the Russians did with Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe and Latvia and Lithuania and Estonia and all of that. They took the guns away and then took over and, and took the government. So all of these things are, are coming to fruition, and people are not aware of it. We're thinking in traditional political terms. Yeah, well, there'll be another election and everything, but exactly. this but, may be the last one. And it, it gets if they've reached the point of another eight years, 
or even four more like it's been in the past, then the possibility of turning it around is it's like unscrambling an egg. We're going to have a tremendous chance. Uh, uh, I, I can't even begin to see how bad it will be. Right. So we'd like you to call right now, 893-2444, and uh, tell them you're coming to the Doctors for Life and get your uh, prime rib dinner at the St. Matthews Community Center. It starts at 6 p.m. And uh, sign up for that and also ask them for this DVD of Pastor Jeffress. And, you know, in this, this DVD says, you know, some people may disagree with uh, the Constitution and uh, Christianity and all that. He says, well, what you need to do is ask them three questions. Do you think God has any opinion about threatening to put children in jail if they mention Jesus in their valedictorian speech? He says, do you think uh, God has any thoughts about taking all the crosses down in America, and uh, except maybe the churches? And he says, uh, do you think God cares about the immorality, the, the uh, drugs, and all the... Uh, uh, crime, you can't walk through the streets at night and all that. Do you think God has a, a thought about that? And finally, he says, do you think that there's, God has an opinion about the 50 million babies that have been slaughtered in the womb since uh, 1973 or so when uh, uh, baby killing was uh, legalized? Well, again, that was when they took prayer out of schools. And right, all of those things you couldn't even have them at a sporting event where the team would say a, a prayer before this for the event. Yes, all of those things have been going on for some time now, and people have been reluctant to get involved to stop it. And it's not a question anymore of, of whether well, I want to be involved. Or not. It's a question of your survival, if survival of your, your children and right. your grandchildren down the road. And if they get into a position where they can appoint young Radicals to the Supreme Court. Oh, brother! It'll be that. It'll destroy be every principle this country was founded on. Well, like I said before, <clears throat> there are two parties in the United States. Right. One is pro-America, and the other is anti-America, exactly. anti-survival. Well, I think we're about out of time. Uh, Ed Holloway, we appreciate you helping us with this situation. Tune in again next week for the rest of the news.